There are over 40 national parks in Kenya alone, and despite being the cornerstones of conservation, the model of fencing wild animals away from people excludes local farming communities and can disrupt elephant migration routes. Today, there's a new breed of community-owned conservancies without fences that are proving that with the right management, people and wildlife can live side by side. But as the price of ivory goes up, elephant populations outside national parks are facing an increasing threat from poachers prepared to take lethal steps to supply that demand. I'm Russell Beard in northern Kenya to meet a community rising to the challenge of elephant conservation with the help of one local hero, Martin Wheeler. Martin, Martin. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. After losing around a seventh of their local elephant population to poaching in the last year alone, Martin, a keen amateur conservationist, was desperate to do something to help. This is my hanger, and this is the machine. Martin was saying that his grandfather came here with an oxen cart in 1911 from South Africa, was it? Coming from Ireland originally. From Ireland. And then um, to South Africa. I wonder what your grandfather would make of this. Clear. Martin ordered his paramotor from Germany, but there are no flight schools in Lukaruki. He told us he taught himself from videos on the internet and is by no means a pro. Yes. Yes. Flying over 60,000 acres of land, with this eagle-eye view, Martin can survey vast areas that would take months to patrol on foot. And thanks to the thermals, he can stay airborne for hours. Lukaruki is not just private land, it's a community conservancy run and managed by the people who live and farm it. The deeds are now in the hands of the 3,000 Maasai who call Lukaruki home. There are virtually no fences from here to the Red Sea, some 1,400 miles away. Meaning wildlife can freely roam, and in the rainy season, this area sees some of the largest herds of elephants outside the national parks. Woo! Not the most graceful landing. <laughs> it climbs amazingly well, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. I saw, I counted about 186 elephant. Oh, what? A, a couple of years ago was, was seven and a half thousand or so. And then last year, a, a thousand of those 7,000 were poached. Um, so we basically had six years left. Mm -hmm. um, but that's when the, the, yeah, the patrolling really started and the need to, to, to make a difference, to try, and, to try and provide aerial support for our, our security on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and, and help the elephant. Yes, where um, extreme sports and environmentalism come together. <laughs> come together. <laughs> a little bit of practice on the landings needed. <laughs> it sounds like we should be um, trying to get a campaign together to get you some spandex. <laughs> some sort. <laughs> Martin didn't set out to become a superhero. He's had a lifelong love of birds and now runs a raptor rehabilitation sanctuary for injured and endangered species. You've been handling him since he's been very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, on the glove only a, a week now. Really? Yeah. And you would fly in much the same way as these birds? I mean, you talked about these thermals. Mm. Yeah, that? and the only difference is, is they can see the thermal, whereas we can't. Um, you do it by, by feeling or by following. Um, and so... By following, uh, by following what? By bird. following the bird? <laughs> yeah. yeah, really? <laughs> Definitely. You know, you, you can see swallows out there in a thermal. I hope to be able to fly with them someday. But Martin's not a full-time conservationist. He and his partner, Antonia, manage an eco-lodge that taps tourist dollar for the community. Every guest that comes to stay, they pay a, a conservation fee. Mm -hmm. That conservation fee gets paid um, directly to, to the trust, the community trust. Mm -hmm. And the money's split 60%, um, 40%. So 60% goes to community and 40% goes to conservation. Wow. 
I mean, Martin, this, this is really your currency here, isn't it? Look at this. It's some view. All of the work that Martin does in the air would mean nothing without boots on the ground. So we've come down to meet the rangers. Now this is the headquarters of the Lukaruki Conservation Zone. So that's 60,000 acres. There's only 22 of them, so they've got the work cut out. And easy. We always do the small drills that is actually uh, to keep people on, uh, on a fitness. What? But because they are all, 100%, they come from the community. Don't forget, they are also the ownership. They are also the shareholders of this group ranch. And they do more than just protect elephants. Sierra One and his rangers get involved in everything from education to land management. This is looking very smart, but I want to tell you one thing, guys. What we do, our area here is actually bare the land, meaning that some years back, before the start of the conservation, most of these areas were overgrazed. What we are doing as a conservancy to make sure we're bringing back our land to normal how it was. These are grasses seeds. We planted them to make sure that we are no more bare land within this conservancy. George, now I want to show you. Yeah. So looking at yeah. this land here, we also put the people to, to cut down the acacia deficiency, plant the grass, look at the same land now starting. The starting, look how it is. This is environmental restoration. Yeah, when it has grasses, it can hold water. Mm. And by holding water, then that means good grass will come up. Mm. But when it's completely bare, the water runs very fast. That even if it rains, how much rain, uh, then the water cannot stop going towards 100 and 100 miles. Mm. But the one, you hold water, whether it's little or small, then grasses can come up. Mm. How, much, how much money are these tusks worth? Do how know, much are they know, getting do for Do you them? know, on, uh, the heaviest elephant tusk that my team had uh, came across and recovered was one weighing 80, 80, kilo, 80 kilograms. Right. And, a kilogram, wow. and a kilogram can go at 15,000 Kenyan shillings. So if one piece of tusk you say 80 kilos multiplied by 15,000 is nearly 1.1 million a task, 1 million a task. So two, two tasks goes to 2 million in shillings. So if somebody kills 18 elephants or 30 elephants here, yeah. even if you're getting 1 million per elephant, yeah. kill them 30, you have 30 million Kenyan shillings. We've got the Sierra 2 unit in the back, looking pretty awesome. And Martin's driving at the moment. We've arrived at the airstrip. We're going to go off on patrol that way. He's going to take off. And, uh, and I guess it's all about the contact between the two. So I think, who's, in, who's, uh, who's our guy here? Where's James? Yeah. You're going to help us out? Yeah. You're going to keep us in line? Yeah. And you're going to keep in touch with, uh, with Martin? With Martin, with Martin, yeah. With, with Martin, with by radio. radio? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, radio communication. And when uh, maybe Martin maybe found something that we needed to go in, uh -huh. they told us we communicate with the radio, uh -huh. and they will tell us that us will us will go go on. Okay. We will carry on. Okay. Together with him. And what right. do you think about this guy flying around? Ah, uh, crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are Lakipia Maasai warriors, trained by Kenya's elite wildlife protection service and are facing increasingly well-organized and well-armed poachers. They've already lost one of their unit in a lethal firefight when a gang of poachers invaded their camp to retrieve confiscated ivory. Ideally, they'd like a helicopter.
but for the time being, they'll take all the help they can get. side of these big acacia trees and the thorns are about that big and you know that um, forget what it does to the parachute if you come into that at 30 miles an hour that's gonna hurt I'm saying dig it I feel like I can dig it then I come and dig it yeah Birdman I'm saying dig it crazy <laughs> Walking through the landscape and seeing this evidence of the elephants really tearing into a lot of these acacia trees. And it looks quite destructive, but of course, this is all part of the sort of natural management of this ecosystem. The elephants are really the ones keeping it open, so they're playing a vital role in keeping this place really balanced and, and habitable for a whole wide range of species. Look at the, the erosion here. Well, the, it's obvious, the erosion is uh, taking place everywhere. It's, it's, all, it's just the yeah. dry soil. Yeah. Yeah. So we are planting grass. All almost the, half of the conservation is planting grass. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. So you hope that this in 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 a short while this will completely transform. Actually, when we get uh, enough rain, actually when the grass uh, plant, uh, will grow. Uh, it's, it will be no problem of grass mm. for the uh, wildlife and livestock. Yeah. I mean, are you are you all from these local communities? Uh, all of us we are come from the same community. Our community are living up of the hills, but uh, this place was, is our land also. Mm. Some community are living there, some are living here. So all of them are living in different places. Mm. Yeah. And before we started the conservation. There's a lot of trouble here, a lot of problem, people pushing, people stealing, mm -hmm. people doing this, these bad things. So after we started, everything is now going, going, going and coming. <laughs> uh, you're saying that there's a group of Ellis. Just between this lager here, uh, Tasia lager, and, uh, and the road goes to Isiolo, so there's a group of elves here. Oh. Oh. Nice. <laughs> There's many here, yeah. both sides. Yeah, both sides. We're surrounded. Yeah. We're surrounded. <laughs> we go slowly by slowly, slowly by slowly. So apparently there's a group of 100 elephants just over there. You can barely see them. You can imagine how difficult it would be to see a group of poachers there in this kind of thick bush. And you just get the sense of how important it is to have Martin's help in the sky. The ultimate sign that the conservation approach is working is that the elephants have chosen to come here. And they come here in the thousands. But the fight is far from over. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were an estimated 10 million elephants in Africa. 
Now there are around half a million in the wild and the numbers are still dropping, with some 20,000 killed last year alone. Despite a worldwide ban on ivory trading, experts estimate that poaching could wipe out a fifth of Africa's elephants over the next decade. The Lukaruki model is proof that with the right management, communities can conserve wildlife and prosper. I have uh, three kids, and from the benefit of this conservation, they are able to access education. It's my land. So whether anyone else can go, I will be left here because it's my home. So in your home, in your house, you can never leave your house and just uh, find it and do it. Because it's my, it's my house, it's my house. Whatever that I'm doing, I'm doing at my, my house. Thank you. And the man, we need to Otherwise, wish you the best. He looks the part of the superhero, doesn't he? Um, and certainly the local hero. Uh, but I think it's clear after meeting the community here and the rangers that he's only one part, he's only one player in the wider conservation strategy here. So he's definitely a local hero, but one among many.